More now on the comments by Boris Johnson that young British men who travel overseas to join the Islamic State group are losers who have no luck with women and use pornography. The Mayor of London made the claim after apparently seeing a secret service file which profiled young jihadis. Well, Chris Dorr from the Council for Arab-British Understanding joins us live now from central London. Very provocative language this. What do you make of what Boris Johnson's been saying? Does he actually have a point? Well, I think he's using very agricultural language you couldn't possibly repeat on Sky News uh, at this time of day uh, to describe a very serious issue. And I think it therefore risks trivialising and sensationalising what are very serious uh, discussions and debates about exactly how young Muslim men and women, don't forget, uh, decide to go off to Syria and Iraq and become uh, Islamic extremists. Now, he is arguing, uh, trying to uh, simplify it, that it's because of certain frustrations, that they are obsessed with porn. Now, sure, that is a part of it, but there are loads of uh, young men who maybe uh, feel, feel like that, but don't become uh, Islamic militants. It is really trying to grab a headline, a pre-election headline, about something that should be handled far, far more seriously. There are a myriad reasons why uh, young Muslims uh, do this. All sorts of reasons, from feelings of exclusion, identity crises, of genuine belief in what they are doing, that actually they are fighting, in the case of Syria, a very brutal uh, regime, and that they can make a difference, and that these uh, Islamist groups, such as ISIS, such as Jabhat al-Nusra, offer them the best way forward. He is right in that, certainly by joining these groups, they do feel a sense of empowerment and power. I mean, they are given training and guns. But yet again, that is something that is not uncommon. We've seen it in plenty of other conflicts and has very little to do with Islamic leanings uh, as such. So we do need this debate. We do need a better understanding of it. But I think that we don't really need to have the sensationalist uh, language uh, decorating the entire debate. So not in such sensationalist language, but he is talking about the need for a new narrative because what we've seen with some of the images that have emerged from these young would-be uh, jihadis is, is that they think uh, holding an AK-47 posing in, in Syria or whatever makes them cool and he wants to make it deeply uncool. I think at that level it, it is true that uh, many of these people fighting in these countries do want to pose with these weapons, and it, it does uh, give them that feeling. But that applies also to, uh, I know of cases of young Syrian men joining uh, the uh, militias in Syria, not is Islamist ones at all, and they feel the same. They suddenly are given a checkpoint to guard, they can stop cars, they can take people out and so forth. Uh, they are given power at the age of 17 or 18 or 19, which they wouldn't have. It's got very little to do with being Muslim, but being in a, a conflict, and we've seen this. And of course, the most tragic end of that is the widespread uh, use of children, even as, as child soldiers, becoming very militarized. And I've actually seen uh, the impact of that meeting with Syrian children who have experienced so much conflict. And when, for example, they draw pictures in a classroom or at a community center, they are not drawing pictures of what my children might draw, but they're draw drawing pictures of tanks and warplanes and bombs. So, yes, this does happen, what he is describing, but I think it's not necessarily the reason people become jihadis. And Boris Johnson also said that Muslim communities need to speak out more. He seems to be implicitly criticising them, see, saying they need to do more to discourage these young men from going to the Middle East. Well, you just have to get on an internet search to see how many uh, Muslim community leaders, how many Muslims in, uh, in public have come out and actually uh, spoken out against extremism to see that that is a nonsense. But there is an issue. There is a need to find a more effective way of trying to reach out into these communities to try to ensure that people are not tempted down along this path. And that needs cooperation between Muslim communities, Muslim leaders, and everybody else. And it also needs to get away from some sort of blame game that we think somehow that one party is more responsible than another. Ultimately, it is the parties directly concerned, those who have uh, decided to recruit uh, these young men 
who need to be dealt with. I think one should be very careful of making blanket uh, accusations against an entire community. It puts them off. We need to actually be encouraging them and not uh, trying to slam them in public. And I right. think a lot more can be done with that. I think that they okay. are willing to work with the communities, but they need to be more encouraged. OK, Chris Doyle from the Council for British Arab Understanding, thank you very much for talking to Sky News. Now, Nick, Nick.